The F-117 Nighthawk officially entered service in 1983 as the world's first operational stealth aircraft. And then, in 2008, the F-117 retired. And that should have been the end of this story, but it definitely wasn't, because in the 16 years since, lots of people have seen the Nighthawk flying all sorts of simulated combat operations against all sorts of adversary aircraft. In fact, people have been spotting Nighthawks in the sky more in recent years than at any point since it retired. People were even getting footage of Nighthawks operating out of Area 51 as recently as just a few months ago. And I've personally been able to dig up contracting documentation that shows the Air Force has already secured maintenance support for the Nighthawk fleet out past 2034. So what gives? Is the Nighthawk really retired? And if it is, well, what the heck is it doing up there? The first thing you need to know is that when the last F-117 rolled into retirement on April 22nd of 2008, the entire remaining Nighthawk fleet of some 52 airframes were all placed into what's called Type 1000 flyable storage out at the Tonopah test range. Now, Type 1000 flyable storage is not something the Air Force does for the vast majority of its aircraft when they're sent out to the boneyard. Put simply, it basically means these aircraft are kept in climate-controlled garages and hangars, all wrapped up in plastic but kept in near-flyable condition at all times. And the reason for that is pretty simple. The F-117 may be decades-old technology, but with an estimated radar cross-section of somewhere between 0.001 and 0.003 square meters, this aircraft is still much more difficult to detect on radar than either Russia's Su-57 or China's J-20 stealth fighters. We're talking about an aircraft that could still serve a real purpose in combat operations if a huge conflict like World War III were to break out. And the the U.S. isn't going to let those aircraft just rot, it's going to keep them in good working order just in case it needs them again. And in recent years, it seems that's paid off. Now there have been rumors of F-117 Nighthawks actually seeing combat as recently as 2017. But to be clear, those rumors have no real evidence to back them up. And while I can't confirm stories about Nighthawks flying clandestine operations over Iraq or Syria. I can tell you a fair bit about Nighthawk operations right here over the good old U.S. of A. And suffice to say, there is some real value in having a stealth aircraft that you don't need for combat operations and you can use for a variety of training scenarios. For instance, back in 2021, two F-117s were dispatched out to the Fresno Air National Guard Base in California, where they simulated the flight profiles of low-observable long-range cruise missiles for Air National Guard F-15Cs and Ds to chase down and take out. And what makes the F-117 so perfectly suited for that role isn't just the fact that it has an absolutely tiny radar cross-section, presenting a serious challenge for fighters tasked with hunting it down in the air, but at the end of the exercise, you can turn it around, fly it back to the start, and do it all again. Something you can't do with a target decoy that would simulate the flight profile of a cruise missile under normal circumstances. But that's not the only thing F-117s have been doing. And it certainly seems as though Nighthawks have been flying adversary air operations against a variety of American fighters, with the Nighthawks standing in for other nations' stealth jets, namely, China's J-20 or Russia's Su-57. Now, the F-117 is stealthier than either of those fighters, but it's also quite a bit slower and nowhere near as aerobatically nimble. Nonetheless, it represents a very small target for beyond visual range engagements, with the ability to take evasive action and leverage countermeasures to prevent a lock. So, if you can get a lock on the Nighthawk from beyond visual range, rest assured, a J-20 wouldn't be much trouble. Now, as of January of last year, the Air Force confirmed that they still had 45 F-117s in Type 1000 flyable storage, with around 10 aircraft already distributed to museums around the country. And the number of Nighthawks kept in good flying condition will likely reduce over time, though we know these aircraft will still be flying for at least another decade now, for all sorts of training operations. And when the day finally comes that the F-22 Raptor flies off into the sunset, 
you can expect it to do pretty much the same.